Well, once again, another movie I want to see is out, and I have no advanced screening for it, but it is the sequel to something, so I will review that something first, which is The Amazing Spider-Man. Now, here's a little fun fact. The Amazing Spider-Man is the first movie, the first, like, new movie that I reviewed on my old channel, Alex G 8462 It's what got me into the trend of reviewing movies to begin with. I mean, I reviewed other movies before, like Transformers 2, Avatar, Citizen Kane, and A Hard Day's Night, but those were older movies. Amazing Spider-Man was the first current movie that I reviewed on the channel, and I really, really liked the movie when it came out. But now, since we have The Amazing Spider-Man 2 coming out, how does this one hold up after two years? Um, well, what's the movie about, first of all? The story obviously follows the origin of Spider-Man, aka Peter Parker, played by Andrew Garfield. He gets bitten by a radioactive spider, becomes the superhero Spider-Man, and it's a Spider-Man movie. This was a reboot that was made to for Sony to keep the rights to Spider-Man so they wouldn't revert back to Marvel and make all the fans happy. But after the origin story, what separates this movie from the original Sam Raimi movie is that Gwen Stacy is the love interest, played by Emma Stone. Um, the villain is the Lizard, who is Dr. Kurt Connors. And that's basically the alternative storyline, where it deviates from the original movie, is Kurt Connors is trying to come up with this special formula to make limbs grow back, because, you know, as Dr. Kurt Connors, he only has one arm. And this has something to do with Peter's parents, mainly Richard Parker who left Peter with his Aunt May and Uncle Ben um, when he was a little kid. So I mentioned before, I really, really liked the first movie when it came out. Um, back on my old channel, I used the star rating and gave it four and a half stars, which in my, my rate, which if you were to take my rating system, that's somewhere between worth seeing in your lifetime and get off your ass and go see it now. But I've had a chance to see the movie again recently and Unfortunately, The Amazing Spider-Man just doesn't quite hold up. Even after two years, it doesn't hold up as much as I thought it would. I noticed a lot of problems that I just missed the first time because I was so focused on whether the movie was going to be dog shit or not that I didn't focus on all of the other problems. I was just happy that it wasn't something like Transformers. Because when Sony announced the reboot, I was pissed that we knew that it was just a movie to keep the rights from going back to Marvel. I mean, thank God Sony didn't do the same thing for Godzilla. I mean, it's the same reason why a Fantastic Four movie is getting made by Fox, just so they can keep the rights. Similar to the first Fantastic Four movie Fox made. But enough of rights and bullshit. What, what else is wrong with The Amazing Spider-Man? Well, I noticed that all the problems I had take place in the origin of Spider-Man. Which is ironic, because when you look at films like Batman Begins and Iron Man, those movies are so much more interesting when telling the hero's origin story. It just takes a really long time for Peter Parker to become Spider-Man. And since Spider-Man's origin story is as iconic as Batman and Superman's, I didn't want to see Spider-Man's origin story be told again. I mean, Batman Begins was acceptable because... We, there was never really a Batman origin story until Batman Begins. And that was the same problem I had with Man of Steel. Superman's origin story is so iconic that I just didn't want to see it again. I also did not like the inspiration for the mask. He gets the idea from a wrestling poster, which is... It feel, felt really forced. There are some attempted moments at comedy that are just... Ugh, just uncomfortable and really awkward to watch. I mean, it's one of those like awkward conversations, which is not funny. And given that this was Mark Webb, the director of 500 Days of Summer, I was shocked that the comedy just didn't work. I mean, at points it did. Like the one part of comedy that made me laugh was when Spider-Man's being a dick to the car thief and um, is just webbing him to the wall. I mean, that's the Spider-Man I knew, but when it's like Peter Parker out of the costume. He's talking to other people like when Stacy when it's supposed to be awkward moments of conversation for the sake of comedy, it just doesn't work. And I was just like, oh this is not this is not working right. 
And as for Andrew Garfield, I did like him as Peter Parker. I think he makes a fine Peter Parker, um, about the level of Tobey Maguire in the first Spider-Man. <clears throat> both have different takes on the character, but both aren't without their problems. While Reese Ifens is good as Dr. Kirk Connors, and I like how they didn't kill him in the end of the movie, like they do with a lot of the other Spider-Man villains, his motivation for what he does in the movie is rather confusing. So it like, there's no real motivation behind the lizard's actions. I also can't stand, I cannot stand the head of the lizard that looks like a Goomba from Super Mario Brothers. I mean, Sony, you'd be better off um, using Zilla's head as inspiration. And coming from someone who hates that 1998 Godzilla movie, that is saying something. I, I've been bitching a lot, but there are just some other issues that I had with the movie, mainly minor, such as the incredibly cheesy crane sequence, Uncle Ben trying to grab the guy's gun right before he gets killed, and the whole don't make promises you can't keep bullshit is just ridiculous, especially after seeing how it should have ended. <laughs> I also personally felt that the story involving Peter Parker's parents would have been more interesting if the film was set in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, because if I'm not mistaken, Richard and Mary Parker were S.H.I.E.L.D. agents, so that would have been a lot more interesting, especially given the fact that at this point in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, S.H.I.E.L.D. is, like, dead. But no, the Richard and Mary Parker storyline barely gets touched upon, and they even drop it, like, in the middle of the movie once he gets the Spider-Man suit on, which I'm sure that they'll expand upon in the sequel and then drop again in the sequel. Again, I haven't seen it, but we'll see. Now, I've spent a lot of time bitching about what's wrong with the movie and what I don't like about it, but I actually think the movie is good seeing it a third time. I saw it twice in 2012, um, one at the theater and once it came out on Blu-ray with a bunch of my friends, and I liked it both times, uh, but this third time, it's, I still like it, just not as much, and I'll explain what I did like about it. While I still prefer Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2 as better Spider-Man movies, this movie is still a lot of fun. The web, web swinging is exciting. Um, not as exciting in the Sam Raimi movies, but still fun to watch. Andrew Garfield, as I mentioned, is a good Peter Parker, and I like how giving Spider-Man mechanical web shooters, there we go, um, makes Peter seemed more like a scientific genius. I mean, I like the organic web shooters because when you take into account that you've gotten bitten by a radioactive spider and you don't acquire the ability to uh, shoot webs, it just seems a little odd. But I like how they made Peter Parker a little more smart and believable as a genius by having him create mechanical web shooters. And I love all the cool things that Spider-Man could do with the mechanical web shooters. Like there's a scene in the school where Peter's fighting the lizard, and he basically cocoons the lizard, similar to the Mothra larva cocooning Godzilla in Mothra vs. Godzilla. I mean, Peter doesn't shoot webs out of his mouth to cocoon the lizard, but he like crawls on the lizard and webs form on him, which I thought was pretty cool. When the comedy isn't trying to be all awkward, it, it can be humorous at points. It's just when it's really awkward, it doesn't work. I like the chemistry between Gwen Stacy and Peter Parker, which is a key essential to this series because something big happens to Gwen Stacy in the comics, which as someone who's not seen the second movie yet, I'm sure it's going to happen. And I got blasted in my older review for spoiling what that thing is. So for the sake of this review, I will not spoil that segment, but comic book fans, you know what I'm talking about. So again, I still prefer the first two Sam Raimi movies over this one, but it is definitely better than Spider-Man 3. But it's not as great as I first saw it back in 2012. So it's good, but definitely not great. I mean, you could tell that this was a movie made to keep the rights, and it's especially underwhelming since it had to follow in the footsteps of the Avengers, which was incredible. However, I'm still kind of hoping that Spider-Man will one day be part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and fight side by side with the Avengers. I mean, every Marvel fan's dream would come true. I mean, their heads would explode if that were to happen. But unfortunately, Sony sees Spider-Man as their most marketable franchise, which it is. It's their biggest moneymaker. So unless they make some sort of deal or unless Disney buys Sony, acquires the Spider-Man rights and lets Sony free, they're not giving up the Spider-Man rights for as long as I live. It's 
it's really sad and I wish that weren't the case, but it's unfortunately true. But hey, that's my review for The Amazing Spider-Man. Leave a comment, tell me what you thought of the movie, subscribe to my channel for more stuff in the future. Check out my other channel, AlexG8462, where you can find my original review for The Amazing Spider-Man. You can find links to my Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Tumblr accounts on my YouTube page. You can go check me out on letterbox.com, letter B-O-X-D.com to see what movies I'm watching and a list of all of the movies I've seen. And if you like the videos I'm making, subscribe via Patreon. I have a video in my channel describing what Patreon is, so you can go check that out and decide if you wanna help support me. Share it with your friends and tell them about me, and remember to know it before you see it. This has been The Cinemas with Mr. Robinson, and I'll see you guys later.